So, catch up in time, and it's been a right nice month. Although we've had a lot of driving and a bit of chaos with Fishermania that we're not going to touch on on this one. We're going to talk about that in a further catch-up that we're going to do in about 15 minutes' time. Um, I had some other matches just before it. Quite a chaotic lead-up going up to the Fish Show final, and I had a couple of really important matches still to fish in that. The first one was a Larford Golden Reel. I mean, Larford, one of my favourite places, love going there. What are you doing? Let me show you the rug. Let me show you the thing. What are you doing? What's... Andrew has commandeered my gear just before anyone makes a comment about why am I sat on this. I got a big eye. Hi, yeah. <laughs> hi, 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 Rud. He's got oh. his eye on you, he's yard. Hey, you guys. Go on, the Rud. There we go. Right, anyway. Well done. Don't break me, Paul. Um, yeah, first one up was Larford on a golden reel. I've not been to Larford this year. No, I haven't. This is my first qualifier at Larford this year. Funny one, that. I've normally been to Larford a few times by now. It's normally broken me by now, and I hate it. But, no, I was keen. Went to Larford. I'm going to say there were 60 there. There were like 60, 65 on. So quite a good one. Both lakes, Specy Lake and Match Lake. Um, and I drew Match Lake. Drew Match Lake. I drew. It was paper pegged, but I've drawn. For anyone that's been there, I drew the Burr Bank. Uh, the Deep Bank at Larford. Much preferred to be on there than the Shallow Bank. Uh, and I was... Um, the rope was two pegs to my left, if that makes sense to anyone. I had an empty peg, then the rope, which cuts across the middle with the aerator on. But really, really fortunately, uh, I had an angler, next put one to my left. I had an undrawn peg to my right. So it gave me, it was every other peg, so it gave me one, two, three, four or five empty pegs. I got a bit of room to my right. Still anglers further on, still the end pegs were going to be massively out to beat. But I felt I had a glimmer of chance because of this room. I mean... Larford, bit of room, makes a massive, massive, massive difference. So, did fail out a chance. The one issue we had on the day was it was like a hurricane. Absolutely blowing a flipping hooli, and it was blowing towards the cafe end of the match lake. So, early numbers, especially like early numbers of match lake, whacking down that way really, really, really strong. And it was sort of, um, it was a bit in my face as well. Coming across the lake, as it does through that gap at Larford, making fishing anywhere past five meters on a pole impossible. So I simply didn't get it out. All I've set up was uh, I got uh, a margin pole at Lent of Adam Firth for Rookery Waters, which is the next one Yeah, I'm gonna talk about. So I had my margin pole, got that up. Yeah, I've set that up to fish short, two lines down the edge. And then, what are you doing? You got a big in? You said you didn't get it out and then you got it up. You're always rude, aren't you? Always rude. Anyway, um, and then long, I've not even set a pole rig up. I've just set up, I set up a bomb. I did, I didn't even set a meth feeder off. I just set up a bomb because I didn't even fancy that. For me, on that deep bank, it's where the silt's accumulated. So I never fancy catching on the bomb. It's just um, on the bottom long, it's not for me. But I still needed to do it because it was minging. I mean, it's unfishable. Anyway, started short, standard Larford match. Started short with six mils. Caught an F1 fish chuck. Why do you always do that at Larford? On the deep bank, you are guaranteed an F1 fish chuck. It's crazy and you think there's millions and then you can't catch them. But anyway, caught an F1. Caught one about six pound, 10 minutes later. I think I caught another F1 and then it fizzled as that short line does. And I just couldn't get any bites. Didn't know where to go. Tried to fish a bomb, didn't get any bites. And now we're in. But the one thing I'd noticed on my six mils was I kept getting roach bites. I, mean, I caught one or two roach, and they were decent roach, they were sort of this size. And I didn't know where to go. There was nothing coming in the edges, obviously, far too early. And I thought there's loads of silvers feeding here. So just as a, a random one, I'd set up a rig, a 414s in three foot. I was planning on fishing corn just off the lilies. They had these little leafy willies. What are they called? Pan, not pandocks. I think they're pandocks. But anyway, and I've swapped that, plumbed up again, just to me right where the wind's blowing, so it's downwind. And I've put one ball of ground bait in and I've loose fed some maggots. But it's a big carp rig. It's got a 14 hook on. It's got 16 to 18 elastic. It's brutal. But I thought I'll have a little look. So second hour, yeah, now we're in. I've gone on this. I'll be top kit with maggots. Just to have a look. Just to mess about. Flip it out. It's a bit solid there, aren't you? Um, and it's been ridiculous. I've had the best hour and a half fishing ever, pretty much. Just catching. On my top kit in one, I've had 10 chub. I've had half a dozen lovely skimmers, pound a piece. And I've had these perch. Two to a pound. One a chub. Absolutely ridiculous. One a bung it was on this short line. For probably an hour and a half. It was brilliant. I was just caught a fish a chuck. That net's actually weighed 44 pounds at the end of it. Just, I think I put one of my F1s in there as well. But there's been 40 pound minimum of these all sorts of silvers in an hour and maybe an hour and 40 I probably spent on that. Brilliant. I nearly ran out of maggots, so I had to stop fishing it. But at that time, the edges kicked in as well. Yeah, because of the lack of options, because of the room and because of the wild conditions, I thought I'll chuck that edge line in early. I'll feed it really early. And the odd one started visiting really, really early. 
and it was brilliant. I was fishing, I fished quite long. I fished probably eight meters either side of me. To my left hand side, it was over the top of a weed bed. So they stayed happy there all day. And to my right hand side, it was quite bare. So I fished nearly to the next peg and they were coming in on that. And I caught fairly steady. I caught an odd fish for the next couple of hours, ticked over. But even though they were visiting, they became really hard to catch on the right hand side. And at Larford, I put that down to the bottom. I think on the bear bank, you're often fishing in bricks and there's lots of obstacles on the bottom. And if you unluckily pick the wrong area for them fish to cruise in, I think they can be really hard to catch. So I bin me long one and I fed on my top kit instead. Let's put a, a ball of ground bait on my top kit, right in the edge here where I could see if anything was coming in while keeping me left hand side going. And he started visiting that top kit, like great big lads as well, sort of eight to 12 pounds started visiting. And the last 40 minutes, I was pretty much able to sit just on my top kit, the odd little visit to my left, but just sat there on my top kit, putting a big trap in, big lump of mushy micros and no, mostly ground bait to be fair, a few uh, micros in it, mostly ground bait, double corn on your, just sitting there. And I think I had 14 or I had 12 or 14 in the last 40 minutes. And they were all big lads. And I ended up with 232 pound, which unfortunately wasn't enough. He got me third in the match, but there was a 250 on Specy. I don't know where it was though. I don't know where about caught on Specy, but someone's had 250. I don't think it was an MPEG. I think it was just somewhere along the chalet bank. And then, which one was it? Ryan or Dan? Ryan. Ryan Bennett won the match off peg one on Match Lake. Next to the trees, he's fished a method feeder to start and then fished four hours down the edge. And he's had, he's weighed 300 pounds, but he's gone over his nets. He's nearly, he's had the best part of 350 pounds. So ridiculous weight. The venue fished phenomenal with, I'm going to say there was six 200s. Yeah, Perry had 200. There was another couple of 200 fished really, really well. 100 pounds all over the place and phenomenal, but not a golden ticket for that one. So we've still got the golden wheels to chase. I did get in the semi-final, which finally, I hadn't got in that all year. So it gives me a, a little glimmer of hope at the end of it, if I don't get my finger out in the meantime. But with that done, two days before fish show, I had one more thing to do, and that was UK Champs. I had the UK Champs on the Thursday, which is about 3 million miles from my house. So I went to the UK Champs on the Thursday at Rookery Waters for the the third round. So we were leading at the time. I went down there leading, so mega confident. All I had was lack of knowledge. Didn't know anything about the place, but really good. Tom Edwards and Jimmy Brooks had really, really taught me through everything that I needed to know pretty much. Uh, and then we got there early in the morning. had a nice walk around with Jimmy after a million mile drive. Took me four hours to get there. Um, walked around with Jimmy. Uh, who else walked around with us? Adam Playford and Jimmy's other mate. I forget Jimmy's other mate's name. Oh, I apologise for that. Anyway, four of us walked round, walked round all the lakes, walked round Magpie, which was the best one to be on, um, Raven and Jay, I think. They were the Snake Lakes, all looked lovely, right where I wanted to be. I wanted to be on Raven for a nice tappy pellet day. That looked spot on for me. And then lastly, we had a little look at Crow. And there was the, the feeling between the four of us was, yeah, don't really fancy this one. Still good just not as potentially carnage as the other lakes were. No chance of winning a match on Crow, I don't think. And just a bit different type of fishing. It Crow's a strip lake where with no pegs on the far bank, just a nice strip, 25 meters wide, I'm gonna say, maybe 30 meters wide. And it's all about meth feeder fishing in short. And because none of us fancied it, unbelievably, out of the four of us that were walking round, we've all drawn in the same seven peg section on this Crow Lake. So all in the early numbers, Adam had drawn peg one, then we had Steve Cook, Cookie was on three, Dale Shepherd was next to me on five, Adds on peg seven, Jimmy, unbelievably, who spoke to me all the way through the week telling me everything about Rookery, had drawn next to me on peg nine, uh, and then we had another chap on 11, and then Jimmy's mate on peg 13, completed our seven peg section, so ridiculous and unknown as well. Why are you beeping? Is he shouting at you? I didn't press anything. You're not performing well enough, you need to try harder. Um, anyway. So we've drawn in this seven peg section, lots of very, very good anglers and a very tricky one. And I messed it up, if I'm completely honest. I've gone down really simple. I've speaking to Jimmy and speaking to Tom. I had the two different matches in my head and I've tried to combine a bit of both in that fish. Method feeder across, definitely the way to go, just as Jimmy had told me it'd be for the first, or well, potentially all match, but that was the key method. Um, edges, massive. Potentially something short, but I didn't bother with that. I've been that one quite quick. And then Caster Shallow. That was me, I was fishing Caster Shallow. I fed Caster Shallow at 13 metres and loads of fish on it, loads of F1s, but too slow. Also, my method feeder fishing was horrendous. 
I mean, the customer was nice, but the way it was going in was like a flipping walrus had fell in my peg. It was horrible. I've had the wrong way to feed us. Everything's been nasty, and due to me just not doing it for a long, long time, I was a bit crap at it. But still, it went round because there were that many fish there. And I caught steady on that for a couple of hours, messed about with Castor Shallow for half an hour, and then I probably spent three hours in my edge, which were lovely, solid, just picking over little traps, catching on corn. Caught really, really well. And I caught lots of carp later on as well. Thought I gave myself, I went from nothing two hours in to I'm in the poo here to claw it all back and put myself right up there. Last couple of hours, I was flying. I was catching carp as well, which no one else seemed to be doing. Uh, come the way in, I think they weighed me and Jimmy in first because we'd had a bit of a battle. It had been quite good. Jimmy had had a lovely day catching 90% of his fish on a feeder. His fish feeder nearly started in the edge. Fish feeder had the odd little visit short and but most of Jimmy's fish had been on feeder. I'd got mine in the edge, so a nice contrast in methods. And I weighed in 190 pounds, 12 ounce or something. 190 pounds something. That's really, really the thing that'd give me half a chance. Unfortunately, Jimbo, and definitely the deserved result as well, after him proper helping me out in the week, he's had 191 pound to win section. I think after that, there were a couple of 140s, 130s, still ridiculous. I think everyone had 100 pound in the section, but it cost me that point. Right disappointing that I should have definitely had another pound. If my meta feeder fishing had been better at the start, it was probably 220 was to be caught, which I think would have been second or third in the match. There would have been a few quid. So I'm disappointed in myself for that, but keeps me up there. And we are now second in the UK champs with one round to go. Barston to go. Tom Caladine, Caladine is winning with three points. He won his section on Raven Lake. Raven? Yeah. We're going with Raven, <laughs> I'm sure it was Raven. He's won a section on there, so he's leading with three points. Then there's myself on four points. And then I think Jimmy Brooks and maybe a couple of others are on five points. So all to play for still going to that last round at Barston. We just need that to be nice. But yeah, that has been my crazy month. So have a look at the next one. We're gonna have a little chat about everything Fishermania. But yeah, it's time for things to calm down a bit. And next is attention is all gonna be on Hayfield. Right, so we hope you are enjoying the video that you're watching. If not, have just watched. But what we'd also like you to see is the packages that we include for our more technical, informational stuff, where what we can bring to you is all we pretty much know about the technical side and our match style side of fishing. I'm and what not we in have, this bit. <laughs> you are, of course you are in this bit. We have two sides of things. We have the basic package that for $4.99, you can watch us fish live matches, a Q&A every month, and additional stuff from Matty Dawes with live matches and more technical stuff on his side. Or we have the all access package where you can literally see technical insights live matches from again from us but also from some of the best anglers flipping on the planet i mean we treat it as three days coaching for us and we go out and we show you what we're learning for anglers like darren cox andy bennett their ship to name Loads. but a few well worth a look if you fancy having a little bit more fishing content to watch <laughs>